Hello, welcome back. What a weekend it's been. Let's get straight into the first. Welcome back, Jamie. Welcome, Louis. We had the Manchester derby and Man United embarrassed at home again. I want to talk about who's at fault because we have pundits that said it's Ten Hag's fault. Man United have no identity. We had people saying it's the Glazers, it's the owners because they're not spending money, which we know they are spending money. We had pundits say that they're signing the players from Erdovizi, eight players as well. Bruno Fernandes, captain. 3-0, embarrassing. Even Pep comes out after and says, we love playing at Man United. How embarrassing is that? So, Louis, start with you. What were your thoughts on the game? Um, I thought it was man, it's the best I've seen Man City play for a while. and They were actually quite entertaining. I don't know if that's a bit of both to do with how bad Man United were. But I think this has been coming for Man United anyway. They've somehow gotten away with it in the last three or four games where they've been winning but they've been awful I think Copenhagen apparently they were shocking and they still somehow managed to win that um, but yeah this is was a game where you've seen it many times at Old Trafford with Man City it seems to just happen I don't know how many times they've won 3-0 there in the last 10 years but it seems to happen all the, all the time um, and yeah they Ten Hag said they they carried out their plan well I don't know what well, that says more about his plan than anything so uh, yeah, they were they were rubbish, and I thought Man City just walked it, were popping it off one touch, two touch around them, and it was a bit it was a bit embarrassing really because it should have been more than three, easily more than three. Um, again, you say the game changed on the decision, but I, I honestly think that had no bearing in the game at all. But um, we can talk about that afterwards. I don't know what I don't know what Jamie thinks about the. Uh, the, the game in general. Yeah, the game in general. I think I, I don't think it was it was a penalty. It just on like he just kind of really hooked him and Maguire. You thought, you thought it was a penalty. Yeah, because Maguire's behind doing exactly the same thing as well. I mean, they got no plan. The problem is he got the other side of him, and then it just it's just clear that Hoyland reacts to the fact he's lost the battle and pulls him down. I think that defines the decision. If they're next to each other or Hoyland's still in front, I think it's fine. You think any other team gets that? But because mm. he gets beaten. Man City get a lot of penalties. Mike Oliver, VAR again, yeah. didn't send Kovacic off, yeah, didn't give the offside goal against Fulham. Conspiracy. I'm getting conspiracy. <laughs> you think you think anyone bar Man City get that penalty? No. Yeah. I think, I think that's it's a penalty. Every yeah. Game. No, yeah. The, the reason He's why this happens is, is if you shout loud enough, you, they'll look at VAR. Oh. That's all you need to but do. But do Man City shout loudest then? Well, you see Rodri, how mad he was going. Yeah, so I'm saying. Yeah, so I'm saying. Yeah, any, basically. So my question is, does any other team get think, that penalty? Well, if you the do chance that, to get that penalty. I don't know if you saw our game against. Well, so, 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 no, we didn't. We, should, we had a more blatant so, one. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying, the Man City. So I'm interrupting. The Man City get that penalty. I would say only Man City get that penalty. So the penalty, I think, I, 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 really, I struggle with that. Oh, we'll give a penalty every game then. If you're going to do that. No, I do agree. I don't think it is a foul. Yeah, but. That ha it happens all the time, and I think it's just it's a bit unfortunate to be like caught out on it that time. It it's is, but you look, look behind them, and Harry Maguire's got someone on the neck. And yeah. if you're in the fan corners like that, or yeah, yeah. Or whatever, it's going to be it's lazy. It's going to be Arsenal did the same thing. You had Tommy Asu on this yeah. and didn't give it. It's not consistent. I'll give you that. But anyway, yeah, Man City. Listen, great performance of Man City. Unbelievable. Mm. Ford and Grealish just took them yeah. to school in every yeah. area of the Foden pitch. especially, I think that if the penalty, like you said, doesn't really define the game. What defines the game? Look at United. Oh, my, I just can't. Can you believe like the mentality? They're like lambs to the slaughter. They come out and they just sit defensively and hope to score on the break. At home in a derby. I don't care. Mm. Like, I don't care. Like, if I'm a fan, I would prefer my team to go and lose 4 0, which they almost did anyway. And just give it a go. You just want to see some fight and some, you know, mm. something. And they just got nothing. And how can Ten Hag say, oh, it's gone to plan when he's hooking players at half time? Mm. How can it be mm. going to plan if you're hooking a player at half yeah. time? That's the fourth time in a row, fourth game in a row, he's hooked someone at half time because things are not go well. Chopping and changing everything he does. He doesn't know what he's doing himself. Mm. That's quite clear. And he mentioned the lucky results. They had the, the, the late comeback against Forrest, I think. They had McTominay score twice. Mm. Dallow had to score a screamer at Sheffield United, who were the worst team mm. in the league. That save a penalty in the last minute against Copenhagen. Mm. And if, if those, I mean, they have had, it can't take away your credit, but if those four things hadn't happened, mm. Ten Hag would be gone. Oh, no, on a punch and he first would game be. of the season. Yeah. He would be gone because that, they've, saved, they've saved them and, you know, they've managed to get the results and things a little bit better come into this mm. game. But, I mean, well, it was a disastrous performance against City. You can't sit there and sit back in, in a derby 
and give nothing. You, you, mm. They go on about how they're the biggest club and the biggest team in the world, and they are, you know, in some levels. But to go out with that mentality, and they, mm. we've been speaking the last 18 months since Ten Hag come in, and it's like, okay, the play isn't great, but it's about installing a new mentality. Mm. Is that, so this is it then, this is, yeah. this is what they want. This is what yeah. they want to be like, you know, little sheep against a mm. massive lion, that's it's, fine. It's really, I'm really surprised since Ten Hag's taken over how like bad the football is, or the style of football, because at Ajax, when, when he got to the semi-finals, they were playing unbelievable Popular football. Also, like, think, it was yeah. so good. And I was expecting maybe first season, you know, slowly get there, understand. But like, they were pretty drab last season. It was basically mm. Rashford bailing them out because he had an unbelievable season. A load of home games in, in both cups is the reason they got not a load of home games, literally all home yeah. games in, in the cups, got the two finals. And I thought maybe this they would kick on this season. I, they've been what it, again, I know they talked about it on TV, but like what is the style of play? It's well, the identity, yeah. I don't it's not an identity. identity. But then I do I, I agree with the identity, I understand. But then you look at it like you know, you say injuries and you look at it above. To have a back line of Dallo, Johnny Evans. Maguire, Lindelof at left back, right? He chose that. No, but he well, chose well, that. Well, okay, well, who is he going to pick at centre half? Varane. Yeah, Varane, no, Varane, Varane. Varane. I know he said, but Varane would be injured. You, there's no sane person is not going to pick Varane. He played Varane in the Champions League, didn't he? No, and we know Varane can't play. You usually play two in a week, right? Amrabat, not up to pace. I know Mason Mount came at half time. How Eriksson still at Manchester United is, is honestly you know, beyond belief. So I do have a little bit of a little bit of sympathy because as a manager, you, know, you talk about identity. What would Pep do with that team? What would any manager he's do? Chose, he's bought these players. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, he's he, bought all of so these he's, players. So he's looked at his defence in the summer. Did he? he didn't okay, buy Lindelof. He's been he there got before. to Johnny Evans. That wasn't. He didn't choose Johnny Evans. It's because of the situation of the ownership. Harry Maguire. He didn't want Harry Maguire. Let's get that right. He wanted to sell Harry Maguire. Yeah. So he didn't want Harry Maguire. I don't know about Delot. So that's three players he definitely didn't want. And he, he was trying to replace Eriksen with Mount, which has not worked. So he's, I think he's replacing with Mount. He's not even playing him. Well, I think it's a lot about Mount really as well. well Here's the, po- the problem is though, right? He's looked, he's looked, so he's gone into the summer looking at a squad. United had thrown a lot of money at Ten Hag in the summer. And he's bought Mason Mount for what, 60 million, mm-hmm. Hoyland for 70 million, and then gone, oh, I need a defender, I'll get Johnny Evans in on a free. Like, that that's a, completely his choice. Yeah. He's pri- prioritised a midfield that he, that he like, has done nothing, Mason Mount. A striker, Hoyland, who's going to take a couple of years to get to his best, when he could have bought, I don't know, Ollie Watkins for 40 million or something. You know, a much better midfield. Uh, could have saved twenty million on James Madison and then bought himself another defender. So he's, we, some, I think Sky Sports showed a graphic of the players he's bought and his and his the, the way he's purchased players has been disaster. So he set himself up for that failure. They have had money. Anthony, Anthony, eighty-five million. I do. I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't know if he chose Johnny Evans. I don't know if he chose Aaron Bat on loan because if he did choose them, why was Aaron Bat on loan deadline day? Mm. Why was Hoyland so late? And Manchester United, the biggest club in the world. And the net spend wasn't great. I know they spent all this money, but yeah, compared to the, like, how much they make anyway. So yeah, I agree. But I do think there's some broken promises here. And also, look at previous managers. We've had Van Gaal, we've had Jose Mourinho, we've had, obviously Solskjaer, not as good, but we had these big managers. Is it always the manager's fault? And this is why I'm struggling well, with Well, I think it's not, in modern football, it's not, you don't give the managers what they want. I think you've got to, you've got to have a, a strategy, a director of football, who knows what they're doing. Because... If you've just got the manager deciding on who, they, that's not their job. Van, uh, Ten Hag's just been like, okay, I was in the area of VC, I'm just going to get a few players who I know. Few eight. Yeah, 85 million for Anthony. No. Like, that was never going to be a good a good. But that was a panic, there. wasn't it, again? That was panic because yeah, due to the start last yeah, year. Yeah, so it is not just him, because he that's not his job to choose all these players, but they, they need a better structure there of deciding on who to buy, because at the moment they're, they're buying duds. And the manager, the manager is going to take the blame if he if he wants these players because that's just, that's how it works. And he hasn't been able to coach and make the best out of them. I don't know what he ever saw in Anthony to be that much of a, an eighty five million pound player. But um, yeah, I, it's happened with three or four managers. Even a similar thing happened at Chelsea in the kind of just when the change of ownership happened. Tuchel got to choose who he wanted, and it's like. No, like, well, most of his signs were just like, you, you need someone to tell the manager, right, we've done this scouting, this player fits for this, this is what you want. Yeah, this, this is that's what problem. needs to happen. Because exactly, it's like Casemiro, right? They bought Casemiro in last season. He was amazing, Casemiro. But it's like, okay, we need to replace Casemiro. Hang on a minute. Have you signed a player last year, right, mm-hmm. who's plus 30, mm-hmm. 
For 70 mil? Yes. Yeah, Highest like ever. Bro, like he was great last season. He's, and he's got goals this season. But do you know what? Actually, we need to replace him already. I began about that. That to me is not clever recruitment. And I agree. Like, and like, the, problem, the problem is, if a new manager comes in, they have to work for these players. Mm. And quite clearly, they're not good enough. But we're also seeing, like you said, you mentioned Chelsea, we're seeing two teams that aren't quite doing it right. And then you look at Man City, unexpectedly have an incredible structure saying, this player fits our system. They've obviously got Pep, which is obviously. I think it's easy on them. He had the same manager for what, eight years or seven years. So then that's what I guess my United then. So if they is it right to just sack Ten Hag? Because there's a lot of rumours now saying he's got three or four games to save his job, right? So let's say the three or four games go horribly wrong. And then what, they're going to sack Ten Hag before Christmas? What, so it just starts again, does it? Mm-hmm. So there's this, this period, just go, okay, we'll get a new manager and who should we get in? We're getting someone that's not in a job, right? And then what, we're just going to do this all over again for every two yeah. years? I do agree with that. But he also needs to start showing something, some tactical, I don't know, something on the training ground where they actually are playing better because they still have these players yet. They're, they're, the players aren't, they're not awful. Like They can play better than what they are because you watch them now and they're, just, they look, they're second best in pretty much every game. They've been a good game. This they, season. They, they have been awful in every game. Have they actually been like a, I mean, I know it sounds really dramatic. They've had 10 Premier League games, three Champions League games which they've been horrible in. Um, have they actually played one in one game where they've actually dominated a team? One that can't, I can't come on to come I to generally can't think of one. Oh, you mentioned how lucky there'd been a lot of results. I mean, Copenhagen, yeah, yeah. gone actually just awesome. scrushed the spot, you know, and it was, that was lucky. So then we're talking 13, another League Cup, we're talking 14 games this season, mm. and they're not, they're not in one. So I do agree that he needs to, you know, really step it up. But, you know, what happens? What, a new manager comes in, what, are you going to change the captain? Should Bruno be captain? Um, uh, on the evidence so far, no, there's obviously a complete lack of leadership. But this, you know, like I say, there's a lack, this is the bigger issue is there's a lack of leadership from, from Ten Hag. You know, you, you mentioned the defensive game plan, right? He's not the first, you know, manager to try and put a defensive game plan in. We saw George Mourinho was a master at this. But when you put a defensive game plan, you need players who are going to be aggressive and completely bought in to, and willing to die for everything. I mean, they just don't believe in what Ten Hag is doing. And then you've got the change room issues with Jaden Sancho who's now, you know, having to lock an academy door and have his food brought over into him on a tree because he disagreed about how hard he was working. Good management. Good management. <laughs> Strong management. And clearly not because the rest of the team doesn't... If the rest of the team went, we agree with that, we, we will die for Ten Hag, fine. I kind of get it, but they don't. They don't believe in anything he does. Yeah. He's lost the dressing room. Uh, and that's, that's clear. That's my worry. They can see 3.94 XG yesterday, yesterday yeah. which is a lot. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't more, to be honest. I know. Well, I think Man City, they do this thing when they're winning, they just pop it around Bernardo Silva. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were basically showboating, weren't they? Let's be honest. They were it was a training it was, game. Even Harlan came out and went, good. Did you see his Twitter post? Good training <laughs> with the boys or something. They were just knocking it around. Yeah, they could have got five, six. If they needed to score, they would have got way more goals. It was yeah. embarrassing, wasn't it? Yeah. And the problem is United might drop into the Europa League after you know, after the Champions League, or if they get a new match, they need January, but are they going to spend money with the owners? And it's just an absolute mess, isn't it? It's weird, because I don't even think, like, spending money solves... Do you not think? Not really, no. I don't think that's the... I don't know. They have well, spent money, they have. It's well, you say that, but, yeah. They, yeah, but, yeah, but you say they're spending money, but compared to, like, how much they're making, I'm not sure, like, they need to get a new back four. Like, it, we are in 2023, right? Well, they've, got, they've got Martinez. He's injured for three months. Yeah, but like they, this is what they have: Martinez, Varane, two good centre backs, Shaw left back, and they haven't had a Shaw's right back. Shaw's been good enough for years. Regulon is in there, obviously. Yeah, on loan. Yeah, but who, what would Man City have got Regulon on loan? I'm not saying that, but they're not. Okay, let's, not let's, let's, okay, let's compare it to Man City, right? Would they have got Regulon on loan? No. Would they have? You have to. You want to be the top. You, 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 okay, well, you have to compare yourself to Man City. They would not have got even Chelsea. Okay, would you think Chelsea have got Regulon on loan? No. Would they got Johnny Evans on a short term deal? No. Would Harry yeah. Maguire still be there? And Dan Abramovich? Absolutely not. Well, put it this way then. Tottenham are top. Are Tottenham didn't make any of those signings. They didn't any big, massive signings. They sold their best player and they're top of the league. Mm. And so, like, you, you, there's, you just run your club efficiently with a decent manager and it'll go all right. You know, Tottenham are top. They've lost their best player, like one of the best players in the generation. And we all said, there they go. And yeah, they well, bought yeah. cleverly and now they're top. Probably that's 10 games, isn't it? We're going to go on to our predictions later and talking to your man Harry Kane, who you get to call a lot. What a goal he scored, by the way, at the weekend. <laughs> Pat Stadding. Oh, yeah, it's stat padding, sorry. <laughs> Pat Stadding. <laughs> uh, stat padding. That, I mean, he is 21 goal contribution to 14 mm. games. Did that, you see that game, though? Uh, I, I knew he got a hat trick. <laughs> Did you see what they were. The Darmstadt were down. No, oh, Bayern Munich were down to 10 men after four minutes. Four then, minutes? Yeah, but then Darmstadt got two red cards. 
the full 30 minutes. So oh, it was okay. nine against Harry 10 Kane. Harry Kane, that's, that's very worrying. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so the Manchester Derby, I think just quick on to ask you, we're going to do our Christmas predictions. But before yeah. we do that, will Ten Hag be in a job by Christmas Day? Christmas, uh, yeah. Uh, Eight games. Yeah. Yes. Not if there's a takeover. Um, no. Right. You think no? Eight, you think Christmas Day, cool, maybe having turkey yeah. on his own. Oh, we, <laughs> we, did, <laughs> we did have this conversation uh, earlier in the season. We, we, we said about what he. I said, oh, they'll bring it. They'll they'll turn it around. But I don't think they will turn it around. Me and you says I think they'll stay. I think it will stay. I just still think they'll be like bang average. I'm not. I'm not sure anymore because I was more like the same of you but now I'm more with James I'm thinking of the crowd of booing dressing mm, needing gone, out man. dressing was definitely gone Fulham away big game they can be quite tough Fulham sometimes Fulham they're a weird team we they, play they could drop up the Champions League by that point as well mm. and they need some well. okay right that's my United then so we've, we've gone over that so now what I want to do is obviously you know let's have a few predictions we talk about Christmas Day and we've got eight games and I want to know who you see top five Christmas Day okay because that sets up nice for the season pretty much halfway there and I want to hear because this season's been it's just crazy isn't it all the big teams keep winning it seems yeah. it seems all the bad teams are really bad and yeah. it seems like we are in for an incredible title race or are we and that's what I want to find out and we'll get the bottom three as well so Louis let's start with you you've got the fixes in front of you but mm. Christmas Day who do you think is going to be top Christmas Day uh, I do think City City will be I think they're just coming into form again now um, especially after, well, after the weekend but they've got two Big games, well, three big games coming up. Us away, but I think they'll be they'll win that. You said um, big, big game, not, not gambling. <laughs> no, they've they got points. Liverpool and Spurs at home. Right. Um, so playing the teams around them, and I think they'll beat them both. And kind of. A bit Liverpool at home, do you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's just a monster. You just chuck, chuck it out there. Yeah, but I think so. I think I think they've got a pretty good record against Liverpool in recent years. So you can go to give us good, just run it down. City. Yeah. City. Arsenal got quite decent fixtures, so I think City, Arsenal, um, Liverpool next, and I think Spurs will be fourth on Christmas. Day. I think they'll still have like decent amount of points, but yeah. I think they'll drop down to fourth. This is very close there. It's so close. And then fifth, I'm going to go for Villa, but I don't want them to be. <laughs> I should give a bit of context. So Liverpool, 26 points. City and Arsenal have 24 points. Um, no, I've gone, I've gone that wrong because Spurs and stuff, aren't they, with 26? Can you get the table up? I will get the table up. Let me get it right, because then we can do a bit of context. I know Newcastle and Brighton have 17 points. Yeah, they're like five ahead, right? Yeah, they're yeah. five ahead for the top five. So as you're doing that, let's hear your top five race. It's really tough because everyone's so close. It could, it could, that top four could be any way around. Yeah, really. so there's three points teams. between Spurs on 26. Arsenal and City on 24, uh, Liverpool 23 oh, and Aston Villa on 22. And then you've got Newcastle, Brighton 17. 17. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah, it's so close, so it, it's kind of uh, hope for the best. I think City will be top. I think they're coming into their own. Rodri's back there, one of the best midfielders of all time. And City are just are bowling out right now. They're just taking advantage of everyone else. They're going to pick up big results against the small teams. We know that. I played Bournemouth, I think, this weekend. Keep that ship marching on. So going Liverpool top, uh, City top, but Liverpool second because I think we haven't given Liverpool enough credit. They're just so steady. They they made easy easy work of Forest on the weekend, mm. and I don't see. I think we need to see them more against some of the bigger teams because it's it's tough because they did so well against Newcastle away and that they had nine men, and then the Tottenham game was almost hard to even count it because of what happened. So we need to see them more against the bigger teams. I think. Chelsea didn't count on the first day of the season either. So I think, but I, I, like, I like the look of Liverpool. They've got a bit of confidence. I think a bit of freedom in that midfield. Because like I said, with Spurs as well, it almost feels like a transitional year for Liverpool with the midfield. So the pressure's mm. off and they're flying with that. Um, Tottenham third. And I realise Arsenal mm. slipping here. I think I, it's hard to put Tottenham in fourth just because of how well they're doing. And there's no reason, they haven't given us any reason to, to write them off as and title contenders yet. I think if the fall off is going to come, it's going to come in the second half of the season. But with no European football, I don't really see them getting that tired or anything like that. And they probably do need a couple of signings in the, in the winter um, and that will define the title race. But Tottenham third, Arsenal fourth and Villa fifth. Villa got a five point gap in some hard games, but because of the five point gap and the fact that Unai Emery is very good at drafting up game plans against bigger teams, I'm going to keep Villa in there at fifth. Okay, and Brian on Newcastle, six, haven't 
<laughs> yeah, I mean Newcastle sick fighting <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Slipping. Let's give the real, the real, because we know these two. You know, no, you're not putting Chelsea fifth, both of you. No, no but we, we will be. Uh, oh, right, plenty of time. Plenty of time. Right, so <laughs> I've flipped on his head. I think Christmas: Arsenal, Liverpool, City, Spurs, Brighton, Villa, Newcastle. Let me tell you why I'm going to go City third. Play seven or eight games because they've got the Club World Cup, haven't they? So that's the problem, yeah. surely. Because that's, you know, you've done that as, a, as I've got to give you some credit as a European former champion. Might take a twice. little bit. Twice? Okay, yeah. Win it twice? You did, did you? The Club World Cup. Yeah. I lost the first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 what? I didn't even know you could lose that. Right, anyway, so they've got the Club World Cup. Will their brain go towards that? I'm hoping it will do. And they've got some tough fixtures as well on the horizon. Uh, the Liverpool game's a really interesting game. Go Arsenal top because I just can't see them. I really like Arsenal. I've said this a long time. I just see it keep going. Good fixtures. And I don't see too many hiccups along the way. Gabriel Jesus helped though. Well, and Ketty's, and Ketty's good against yeah. the weaker teams. Ketty's a better goal, he's a better goal scorer then. Big game, exactly. And, I, and I, do you know what I love about Arteta? I, oh, I don't love him so much. He dropped the Odegaard. And that needed to happen. I mean, I mean he rested. He dropped the Odegaard. He's been awful. He's playing Sheffield United at home. I think he's, he's, not, he's not dropping in. He's Sheffield playing. United at home. You know, as we love, you know, it's a tough game. Tough game. Okay, and then I think Liverpool, like you said, not enough respect. As a City, Spurs have got some hard fixtures coming up. Let's really find out about Spurs and see what they're about. Um, because I do think they're going to rely on Madison, Son a lot. And is that going to continue? Son's now back to form though, right? Eight goals yeah. in the Premier League. I don't know what happened last season. He just completely yeah. lost clinical, his ability. Clinical in front of goal, isn't he? He's the second top goal scorer joint. And in front of goal, he's just ice in his veins. Uh, something about him being the most clinical striker in like the last 10 years really? or something. Yeah, for like X G overperformed X. Like we performed that before. We just didn't rolled it in the knee. Yeah, he's calm, he's very calm. And then I'm going, I'm so excited, I'm going Brighton fifth because Villa have some really hard games. They've got the Man Cities, they've got Chelsea, well, well the Chelsea fan cover. Oh, they only beat Chelsea, didn't they, Stamford Bridge? Not Chelsea, yeah. <laughs> but they've got some tough games and we've got the turn now. We've got the Sheffield United to come. We're going to the Forest as well. We've it's got bankers. Fulham. At home. Yeah. Well, apparently you're allowed flying elbows in the Premier League now, and then he gets a 25 yard. No, we didn't. We looked leggy. I'll be honest with you. We did look a little, little bit leggy. Now in Europa League, we're beat Ajax in midweek, and that's probably us through then, so we can rest a few. No, we get a few injuries back, and I just think we're, we're kick on. Uh, and I think we get fifth, and then Villa sixth, but Newcastle seventh. Called on the podcast. I think Newcastle are a little bit overrated, as we said that lost at home to Dortmund, and then drew the Wolves away, and they were lucky. That penalty. Talk about consistency was horrible. Was but so what I would say, the ref gave the penalty, right? I don't mind that as much. The ref gave the penalty mm. on the one on Shah yeah. and stuck with it. The one on the Man City was intervention, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's why I struggle. That's why I struggle. When, when a referee, Mike Oliver, Mike Oliver, gets involved, it really upsets me. Uh, mm. So we okay, that's the top seven. That's the Christmas Day predictions. Obviously Chelsea or Man United aren't in there, but they're being run badly and Brighton are in there. Happy days. Right, now bottom three. Now, maybe you might feel a little bit different bottom three. So who's your bottom three Christmas Day? No, I did we sport before, but then that was my prediction for the end of the season. Uh, so I think we're all going to agree, I think, as Luton, Burnley and Sheffield. You think Luton will be in the bottom three, do you? For now, but I actually think they'll, they'll, be, they'll give it the best fight. I think they'll be... I don't know. I think they'll go into the last six or seven games with something to play for. Um, obviously, Sheffield United are probably going to... Obviously, probably. They, they're going to replace their manager at some point. Sheffield United is just... Horrific out there. Um, just shipping so many goals. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about Sashley. United and like no fight, and then Sheffield United. Just, I'm it's sorry. Fun. I don't. Even, I don't even believe like. I think you can have a squad that's subpar in the Premier League, and if you show enough fight, you can get keep games close. And they just aren't. They're just so bad. Well, Minus twenty two goal difference. Yeah. But, I mean, Burnley are playing bad. Game. Burnley are playing bad, and they haven't got a quality in this squad. They're keeping it close ish in games. You know, at least they're scoring some goals and. But yeah, Burnley are not adapting well. Company refuses. I think with company in Burnley, the big problem is the suit and the hat. That's just a, that's just a normal. You cannot wear a suit, a, a suit jacket, a t-shirt, and a hat. No thank that, you. That, yeah, that is relegation <laughs> written all over it. He should be training on his own. The academy, Luton. I think yeah, like I said they'll give it a fight. Seems like Forest will be down there. I think three almost, promoted teams. You're saying the three promoted teams. For now, yeah. Christmas Day. It's too much of a gap. I right can't now. see how it can be anyone else. Just looking Bournemouth? at it now. Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Bournemouth, I mean, big, big result for Bournemouth at the weekend. Um, how, many, how many points are you on, Chelsea? 
and 12. Can we dragged into it? You're like six games. You're five points ahead of us. Yeah, yeah you got the big game. Sorry, I've gone back to your ball. I'm just getting excited. It's one day Chelsea will get relegated. I'm here for it. Go on. Um, yeah, I mean, Chelsea had one point, uh, 29 goals conceded, basically three goals a game. Derby. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm, I, want, I want it to happen. Burnley, four points. Luton, five points. Bournemouth run six points. And I don't think Bournemouth have been that. I think they've been a bit unlucky in some. They've been I mean, that horrendous. Um, I don't see how Sheffield United, Burnley, and Luton aren't the bottom three at Christmas still. I, I, again, I think Luton might pick up some points. Maybe, maybe they'll be 18, but I don't see any. Any, any of the others, like any Forrest are already on 10 points, which is yeah. not A point a game, game. Sam Allardyce yeah. used to always say, if you average a point a game, you'll stay up, right? I think... So 38 yeah. points will probably do it. And they're 10-10, aren't they, Forrest? Yeah. And their home record. They've got, they got strikers that can score goals. Mm. From They've got proven strikers. I, always, I thought at the start of the season, Fulham would struggle, just because I think... Well, I still think they can't score goals, but yeah. they're still getting enough wins against... If they, if, if, basically, if all those other teams... Beat the three uh, promoted teams, which it yeah. looks like everyone is at the moment. They'll just stay up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sad, isn't it? Kind of ruined the Premier League a little bit. It has. It has. It, you're actually getting genuine bankers now. Yeah. Like when Luton are playing, like Sheffield United, you're like, well, I don't even want to watch this. And it's five 0 Arsenal at Sheffield United. Yeah. And Arsenal rested a few, or, mm. or dropped a few. Whoever they, they they took a few out, and you're thinking, this is not what the Premier League's about. And she- if I was a Sheffield United fan. I'll be like, well, you know, what, what what are you doing to me? You're just completely it's same up. as United. The, the same kind of like the take the gambler take over the take over won't go through. They just can't seem to sell the club. They've got they sold the best players in summer no, after yeah. going up. Mm. It's just it's sad, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's a tough situation. But like I said, the minimum is is just a bit of fight, and they're just not showing anything anything at all. There was there was a podcast pre season a Sheffield United fan, on, and he goes, "I'm worried." He goes, what do you yeah. worry about? He goes, "I think we're you know we might actually." Not beat Derby's record, and I thought, mm. imagine that as a fan. Like you go into that, yeah, I'm really worried we might not beat 11 points. Mm. You know, it's well. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, it's really sad. Right, okay, so yeah, I agree with you. Don't see any change there really. The only thing might be if someone picks up a couple of home home wins, but I really don't see it. It's mm. the it's the worst team maybe in history of the Premier League, and we got to play two of them yet. So watch them come comes the Amex and get a one 0 win. But uh, no, okay, so Super Bowl, that's done. Right, here we go in Tom's teaser. I've got a really interesting one for you today, and it's a Premier League fact, okay? So, who is the only goalkeeper, who is the only goalkeeper to win P- Premier League Player oh. of the Season? We nearly went, didn't he? Who is the only goalkeeper to win Premier League Player of the Season? Premier League Player of the Season? Mm, good question, isn't it? I don't ever look at the winners. I don't think that thing. has happened. Happened once, What, yeah. PFA? The Premier League player of the season. It only ever happened once. A goalkeeper's won it. The other problem when you think of a good goalkeeper is they're usually good players in that team that would have, would have won it instead, right? I think, uh, I think I've got some ideas. Yeah, so there are a lot of ideas. If you want to you know, talk out now, please do. But that gives Jamie a little hand, doesn't no. it? So, the only goalkeeper. Premier League player of the season, like the PFA player of the season. Mm, I only won. I think I won. You can go. check. okay. Pep check. It's because the defence, the, the defence did. Pep yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he did it then. He didn't know? No, no. So not, you think not, that's wrong? Yeah. Yeah, it's wrong. It's not Peter check. So I was thinking, potentially, De Gea that one season where he had, where he was on route, I think it was like 17, 18. But then, no, he wouldn't be. So he wouldn't win the or anything like that. I don't, I don't even know. I'm, I'm questioning this, this fact. No, it's not questioning this fact, is it? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go Pretty for... Pretty question of fact. Uh, I hope he gets this wrong now. Is I'm, I'm going to go Sh- Schmeichel. Why? Which one? Which Schmeichel? Yeah, which Schmeichel? True. Uh, Peter Schmeichel. Oh. Is she that final answer? Yeah. I thought you were Casper. Yeah. The answer is Schmeichel. It's Casper. But... It is Peter Schmeichel. Oh. 1996. He's the only <laughs> goalkeeper. I was getting no. He questioned the fact. <laughs> I'm just oh, yeah, I, I'm questioning the fact that yeah, he got it right. And now he has the audacity to say, oh, yeah, I knew that. You know, you know, I just... know, it was going to be him. There weren't going to be anyone in. David Hale would have been, you know, check, you know, that, or, you know, there's been lots of quality goalkeepers. I knew it wasn't. But goalkeepers don't need to get there, yeah. basically. Okay, right, let's get into our next topic. And the next topic is we're talking about gambling. 
Now, Tonali has been banned for 10 months, all football, yet he can train with Newcastle. Tony has been banned for eight months and he was not allowed to train with Brentford. Now, obviously, there's a lot more happening and I want to get your views on it because what I'm struggling with is in 2017, 2018, 14.5 billion pounds was spent across the UK gambling, right? It shoved in your faces advertising. Now they're naming stadiums mm -hmm. after it, sponsorships, right? And suddenly they've got, oh, all players are gambling. We better start banning them. Let me tell you something now. There can be a lot more players that are going to get this. If we, only, if we only think these two are the only Premier League players that are gambling, then we've got a, a huge issue coming our way. And I'm really struggling with the fact they just go, right, they're banned. We had Paul Merson come out, you know, who, who's, who used to really suffer from gambling. It is an addiction. And, and we're just going, OK, yeah, you're an addict, but, you know, right, ban them from what they love doing. And I'd love to get your views on it. I'll go with you, Louis, first. What do you think about the, the first of all, the Tanali 10-month ban? What do you think about it? I think I understand what you're saying about obviously it's a it's a problem it's a it's an addiction like Paul Merson said it's like it's not something you can just be like uh, like castigate them for but at the same time you can't be betting on your own team and they know that they do know it so it's not like I uh, it's not like oh you know oh I've got a, I've got an addiction blah blah blah. blah. Okay, fine. Help them with it, which they will do. They'll they'll help them with their addiction, and you know, uh, they'll probably do more in the Premier League, maybe more awareness about it. But they do know, like they know they know what they're doing is wrong, and I, and you have you have to ban them for it. You have to. I don't think there's another way you can. And maybe now that Tony and Tonali have been banned, it's like quite. I don't think there's been that many of them before. As, Not yet. Yeah, but. Now it's kind of out in the public. I think that will definitely deter or stop players doing it if they have been doing it before. And I think you have to ban them, really. But we think ostracising them, just like Tony, you can't train with the first team. No, that's, that's bizarre. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what on earth that, that is going to achieve by not letting him train with the And team. he's the first player, so what's it? Every player now will get eight months to ten months. Will they? That, that's a standard, because what, is it going to get easier? Is it going to get harder? Because there will be yeah, more I think, I think you've got to. You've got to do that. They know They know what they're doing is wrong. Like, you're not betting on your own team. Okay, so the, the player standpoint, you agree. Player standpoint, you agree. What Louis saying there, the size of the band, and he should have known. There's a, there's a few different parts to it, right? Because, like, like as you mentioned, bat betting is at everywhere in football now. We've mm. seen it take hold in America now that gambling's legal as well. Um, and they're kind of making the same errors. You know, we, we watched the playoff final last year, or this season, last season, this year, and the, the, the amount of places that it says the word bet is just astounding. Mm. On the players' shirts, around the boards, around the stadium, and the fans mm. as well, probably people are not considering their role in this in terms of it's not good for them either, ultimately. Yeah. Um, I think that's the bigger problem. And it's everywhere, and the awareness isn't good enough, the help for players isn't good enough. I know they do look awareness courses and stuff, but there's more that needs to be done. But to Louis's point, you have to... It's a very difficult thing, you know, to be addicted to something, and I get that. I don't, don't want to conflate those two things, but players going into professional careers know there's certain things they're not allowed to do, and this is one of them. And, you know, the Chelsea shirt, there's a similar era to Adrian move to. I don't want to, con I don't want to conflate two different... Two different addictions, but there are, you know there are other addictions that people have as well. That they do that gets them banned from football that they can't do, and they know they know from the start they can't do. They know from when they're fifteen year olds you can't do it. It's not just now the betting's big; mm -hmm. they were always not allowed to do it. Um, and they they know to the extent of, and I know it's difficult when you're addicted to something, but they know to the extent of they make that often they're making bets through other people because they know it's illegal. They want to do it in different people's names. They know mm -hmm. they're going extra steps to avoid the rules. Mm. Whenever that, that's happening, you just can't, you can't tolerate that. Mm. Um, and with Tony, I think that it, he's allowed to train now. Uh, you yeah. know, I think there's a certain time frame that he can't train for. And I think that's just as part of punishment. People, they can't have people, you can't say you're punished, you can't play football, but you can play football every day mm. and go and train with your friends. And that, yeah. you know, that's, you, that's the reason you can't, there's got to be some element of serious punishment. He can't come back fit and firing as better than anyone. Well, Tonali, they're, they're allowing Tonali to train. Which is, that's the discrepancy. That shouldn't be allowed. But the problem is they, you know, it, one's been, the FA has given it one, the Italian FA, and they've got mm. to have some sort of, there should have be some sort of uh, set punishment from UEFA or someone mm. else should handle it then. Um, but yeah, the, the bottom line is, 
A, football's not doing enough and it's a disgrace how much betting has taken over. And, you know, yeah. thankfully now the shirts are going to have to take off the betting sponsors in the Premier yeah. League. Um, the second thing is, it's an addiction and very difficult and people should have much more help players as well because people who have a lot more money to spend often fall into this trap. And on, on football buses, they play cards and all yeah. these things as well. And th but thirdly, they also do know the rules from a very young age. And if they're going out their way to avoid the rules, you've, you've just got to punish that. Yeah, no, I, I just, it's obviously a huge market. I was doing 14.5 billion. That was, a, that was a gambling commission. And that was 2017 18. That would have grown. That would have yeah. 100%. There's more and more bookies now. And we're getting thrown in our faces. You know, we watch a game of football, half time, put this bet on. You know, mm. this, and, I, and I they're banning pressure. that soon. Yeah, they all, they're going to ban the shirt sponsors in like three or four years. It's mm. very slow. And at that point, they're probably going to change their minds. And I just really struggle when we shove something in someone's faces and players go, oh, do you know what? You know, you're wrong. And here's a huge ban because I just don't believe in a million years these are the only two players at it. And I think it's only a matter of time if you go, yep, this player, this player, this player, this player, and then we're going to have a huge sort of pandemic. And I just think gambling is a hidden disease that we no one talks about enough. Yeah, and look, even Tony, every piece of training wear and every piece of um, football shirt you put on had a bet sponsor on it. Yeah. It was Hollywood bets that was on there. And, yeah, on their shirt. And so, you know, that's in his face every day. And, and if you're already a betting addict, that's just another reminder to put your bet yeah. on. Right? And, yeah, I think the problem as well, it's the, like young guys who've got loads of money and just loads of time that they're just thinking. Yeah. That's it. Um, You've got money to lose, right? And money they're willing to lose. And that's yeah. obviously, but we can't, we can't take that also past, like I said, the fans as well. Some people haven't got money in this little exact situation, you know. Mm. That's, that's, the, that's the target, right? So that's, mm. a, yeah. So they're in the f only 30,000 fans at an average stadium in, in the top, say, two or three tiers of English football. And they're sitting in a bet, a stadium named after betting, wearing bet a t-shirt with yeah. a betting sponsor on it with betting going on the advertising boards and betting on the screen. Betting in the, in the ground as well. Yeah, for, no, can... other, for no other addiction would you have that. You can't yeah. advertise this is, that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a secret addiction, isn't it? Because you go like, I went to Old Trafford recently and suddenly you've got, there's a gambling bit in Old Trafford. It's like, here you go, come on, bet on Martial mm. first goal scorer. Come on, bring it in, you know, like, and you're thinking, you go and get a drink and you put a bet on. And it's a huge queue, bigger than the actual like bar. And you're thinking, hang on a minute. Oh wow, well, this is this is picked up, isn't it? And you can do it obviously your phone, and you can do it in two seconds, and that's my only worry. And you can't you can't advertise drugs, you can't advertise medication, you can't advertise beer with alcohol in it mm. um, in the Premier League. You can't even drink by your seat; you can drink underneath, mm. and yet you can sit yeah. sit in your seat and put a bet on because someone's just told you to on the board or mm. sponsored by. And I do think in the coming years it's something that will change. I think so. Like uh, advertising for sure. I don't think. I thought they stopped. They're meant to stop, um, you know, like in play with Ray at half yeah. time when he comes on. He's like two nil Arsenal at fourteen to one. You're like, oh, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Of course, you go, every time you're like, well, that's good. <laughs> what fourteen to one? But, uh, I think I don't know. To be fair, I'm not watching on like Sky Sports enough now whether that happens still or not. But I think that needs to change for sure. Yeah. I don't think I don't see. I think we'll look back at it in ten years' time and be like, wow, I can't believe that was still allowed. Like, yeah. like the same thing we do with. Uh, smoking or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I think there's nothing wrong with betting, of course, and it's people that can control it, right? Betting's it's fine if you're having, doing it with friends or you're, you're doing it. It's when you're getting out, out, when you're just putting bets on for the sake of putting bets on and you're financially you watching the Polish or, Premier yeah, League yeah. on a Tuesday night because mm -hmm. you're backing five or more mm -hmm. yellow cards. You know, I've got a bit of a problem here. The Premier League's responsible for all this. You know, they should have cut this out years ago. The reason they haven't is they, it's, it's, it's benefited them massively. Talks, yeah. They've taken so much money from it and we're seeing the same with NFL now. They, they're raking it all in and they know in two or three years they're going to have to go back and say, "Oh, we can't do this and that." But in the th so they know there's an, a, a time frame where they can make the mistakes and no one will ask them questions. Oh, the government would love it as well; they get all the money from it. But then afterwards, now we're going to go back and say, "Oh, it's such a shame that everyone's addicted." Well, it's not. You should have known. Yeah, it's such a shame everyone's addicted. What was the odds on that? Two to one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think I just think yeah. So we talk about that. And I think it's a huge issue, and I just do not believe that the last player. I think you'll get a lot, a lot of players uh, that's going to come out. And be like, yep, they're banned, they're banned, they're banned, they're banned. So maybe that will help awareness. Mm. All right, best bets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from that, best bets, right? But yeah, best yeah. bets responsibly, Response, okay? Yeah. Your best bet, and, and we're winning, so if you're winning, right? No, your best bets responsibly. And there's been huge news, best bets. Get the clacks on alert. Are you ready for it? Louis Sots won a bet. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Bournemouth. Finally. Told you, you knew it. Bournemouth. We the, laughed at him. We did. I the, laughed myself. The bet that he looked at the camera and went, I don't want to bet on this. <laughs> I'm not sure, but you did it and you won how much? 
40, 43, 33. I'll tell you 60. what, so now overall, you need about 15 down? Yeah. <laughs> Which is a great ad bit for better response. Yeah, yeah. He's won and he's still down he's after shit, six weeks. After six oh. weeks. Because one week he was off, he was in cycles and he didn't have a bet. To be so you've lost five out of six bets, right? You eventually win a bet you didn't want to bet on and it comes on home. Yeah. And you're down I 17. I think I've been a bit unfortunate to be fair on some of them. This is why. Yeah, been. and you have been very, very lucky. So you're poor of 2 1. Obviously, Vincent Company would be fuming at you because that offside decision at the end oh, was. They took. I've never seen an offside record, take so long. Record time. Was it? Right? It was, must have been over five minutes. It was over five they minutes. They took yeah. so long. And uh, it was offside. Yeah, it was offside. <laughs> His head was offside. So, Bournemouth get it done. Did you see the winning goal? Um, James Trafford, the goalkeeper, what? Yes, done. yes, I did. Oh. Yeah. I thought that, that's quite good, though. No, Billing there. chipped it, but mm. give me a break, Trafford. You've got to yeah, save that yeah, big yeah. feet. Come on. <laughs> right, well done. 45 in the bank. Ka ching. Mm-hmm. Guess what? 45 win as well. well I said in the podcast that Wolves, Newcastle, Newcastle over Reading, even said it finished 2 2. If you, if you really. If I really went for, went for it, I could have got 2 2 and I would have been cashing in. So 45 for me as well, which puts me profit. Here we go, plus 8. Plus 8. Yeah. Let's go on holiday. <laughs> and then, Jamie, unfortunately, you didn't get a win, but we know yeah. you're up overall, right? I'm up 20 still. Chelsea let me down after four games. They were the one and the first team let me down, so it wasn't anything. Never back on. the lunchtime kickoff. You have one on lunchtime. Never, Never back to Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. I backed Chelsea, Chelsea once and lost as yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah, still on £20.75. So. Oh, you're right. flying. Oh, Absolutely money. flying. House money. House yeah. money. Yeah, house money. Okay, so this week, and Louis, what have you gone for? I've gone for, so, uh, Man City to beat Bournemouth at home to nil, which I think is very good odds. It's only eight, it's eight to 11. Well, that is good odds, yeah. Uh, considering they're nine to one on to win. Well, that is good. Anyway, so it's just to, and to keep a clean sheet. <clears throat> Gone Everton, Brighton, both teams to score. It's a clean sheet on the horizon, people. Brighton will be keeping a clean sheet soon. Oh, it's the, fir- the first, no, I'm, not, I'm actually oh, just gonna do it in the double, because <laughs> I'm not confident <laughs> on the last this is one. It. Another one, another one, another one. No, uh, yeah, so, Brighton are the first team to have their first 10 Premier League games, both teams to score. Entertaining. Put us on TV every game. Um, which, obviously, now I've got the best on it. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah, but yeah. I think Everton a bit back in form. Yeah. Calvert Lewin scoring. Um, hopefully, yeah, both teams to score in that. Nice and then, out. yeah, so £10 returns 25 Hopefully, end in profit. End in profit. That's the, yeah, that's what a the fitting end, end that will be. <laughs> up, up and down your journey. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, you're obviously up. You can only finish in the green. That's true, yeah. That's true, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Me and Louis are up against it because I got yeah. plus eight, so I could go down. You're down at the moment. So, yeah. what have you gone for the last week? Quite simple. Liverpool are away at Luton. Uh, we spoke about Luton's struggle. So, I got their minus two, so to win by three goals. Minus uh, two away at Luton. What's you're... staggering, though, right? Go on. Liverpool, in 14 games this season, have scored three or more. Eight times. Eight times? Out of 14. Is that? Oh, wow. Yeah, in all Europe, competitions. Yeah, Europa League. Yeah, no, 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 no. Europa League. Same though. Wish we could. Uh, that is. Wish, yeah. <laughs> Not in the Europa League, but 28.75 anyway. So okay. we'll take that. You've been, you've been picking yeah. up, yeah. Luton. Liverpool flying. Yeah, Liverpool are flying. Oh, yeah. I've gone for uh, Wolverhampton to get a win at Sheffield United because they're the worst team in the history of the Premier League. And Evans, that's bring, bring a nice little tasty 20, and I'll be up. Up there. Yeah. If I lose, I will be down two. If I'm up, 28. Mm. And off can't, we go. So the pressure's on this week. Quite can't tempted to, to. You can't be adding any extras now. No, 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 no. 5 0 City. 5 0 yeah. City. Yeah. Just a bang on 5 0. 14 to 1. Right, anyway, okay, so fitting way. That's uh, best bet's done. So now we're on the quiz, okay? Now the oh, quiz. Real. Here we go. Man, I, I am Sheffield United in this quiz. You are, yeah, you are. You are. <laughs> And I actually had a Sheffield United question in here, which I might have changed. <laughs> right, so let's go quiz, okay? okay? If you know it, jump on in. No Google the answer. No, I'm not right? joking. Right, okay, so question one. And for those getting involved with the YouTube shorts, thank you. Really good engagement. And uh, see if you can beat Louis or Jamie. So question one. Which player, which player has scored the most goals in Manchester derbies? Uh... Wayne Rooney. Far do you go back? Oh, it's true. I'm going for Wayne Rooney. Which player has scored the most goals? I saw goals and assists. In, in Manchester derbies. Yeah, Ryan Giggs is something. Yeah. But that's not the question. Yeah. So you've gone for Wayne Rooney. Interesting. Oh, I don't think it is. I'm trying to get longevity, but... There are two players, uh, longevity of 10 goals who I'd never heard of. But this player has 11 goals. Oh, I think... 
Is that right? It's when you're in. Is it? Yeah, it's when you're in. I thought, I thought, I think you jumped the panic. It is when you're in. Yeah. I was going to go. When you say it's only eleven, I just said. Also, Harland uh, is going to catch yeah. that soon. Guerrero, what was he? Like? Yeah, I, saw, uh, I would have said nine. Was, I think. I would have said a good Harland game. has more than Cristiano Ronaldo already because he has four mm. in two games. Yeah, I was thinking four. Ronaldo, then not longevity. He's got mm. Guerrero, but Harland has four in yeah. three games. Okay, next one, one nil. Good start from you. Next one is Rafa Benitez has managed how many clubs in the Premier League? Just number. Rafa Benitez has managed how many clubs? Four. One one. Oh, it's just Go gone for it. it. Well it's gone for it straight away. Can you name them? Newcastle, Chelsea, Liverpool. Well done. Well done. Well done. Right. I was a bit worried about that question because I was worried that you might know that from Rafa Benitez. One oh, I should have just one. Gone for it. Would you take Rafa Benitez back at Chelsea now? No, no way. <laughs> no way. Okay, next one. Who am I? Who am I? Okay. Right. Who is this player? I'm going to name their clubs. If you know them, jump on in. Right. Start that Mets. Newcastle, Fulham, Manchester United, Everton, Spurs, Sunderland, Lazio. Wait, can you say it again? Can you say them again? Mets, Mm -hmm. Newcastle, Fulham, Manchester United, Everton, Oh, uh, Louis Saha. Louis Saha, two yes, one. What a striking he was, by the way. I liked it. I always liked him. Right. Good name. Two one. We talked about this club a lot. I don't know how to go for them or mix it up a little bit. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for my question five first. Okay? So it's two one. Whew, question four. This is quite big, actually, isn't it? Right. This season, which player from a team in the bottom ten? Right. has the most assists overall. They have the most assists, but a clue, they play for a team in the bottom 10. Who's that player? I saw this. It's... Oh, it came up. Who has the most, basically, who has the most Premier League assists this season? Oh, uh, and I'm just Neto? Clue. Pedro Neto is the clue. Oh, I don't know if it's him. That's a clue, isn't he? Um, what half? I'm trying to think who's in there. Nah, I thought I was charged for goals, didn't I? Okay, I'm going to give it to you. It is Pedro Neto with seven. Is it? Yeah. He's got seven assists. I know. He's on five, isn't he? It's impressive. I thought wow. you might get on your Pedro Neto. Uh, right, 3 1. Got one question left. Now, if you get it right, I'll give you my tie break question anyway. Right, last season, which team won a game, a Premier League game, with 18% possession? Last season? Yeah. Uh, which team won a game with 18% Last season, percent Leeds. Pos- at Liverpool. Leeds at Liverpool. I'm going to go. It's not Leeds at Liverpool, no. I'm going to go. It's going to be a struggle at Shaw. Is it Everton against Brighton? It wasn't. No, it's 5 1. I no. know. It wasn't. It was. Right in the last season, don't you remember, it derailed Arsenal's title hopes. Hold on. Nottingham Forest oh, beat oh, Arsenal 1 0, 18%. Here was the question I was going to ask earlier to the Nessie one, see if you've got it. Uh, well, we know Sheffield United have one point. But who did they get that one point against? Uh, Everton. It was. What was the score? Two all. Two two. It was yeah. As if they've got one point at home at Everton. Right. That's the quiz, Louis. You are the quiz champion. As always, you just come on through, Louis Sahar. Big answers as always. And that's uh, the podcast. Thanks for watching.